uh, once I started doing the research, I have um, found out that I could do my degree here in two years for half the price that I would do it in the States. Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't have to do the LSAT. So the difference is here, you could go from, so at 18, you can choose to go to law school straight away. Good morning. I hope you guys are starting off today um, with a good day. I'm going to be meeting today with Ana Rivera. So I guess I'll start with her introduction. She'll join us here in a little bit and I'm waiting for some people to log on and start viewing our Instagram. So today we're talking to Ana Rivera. She is a law student from York Law School in England and she's going to start she started a brown eyed a lawyer to share her advice experience and insights with other law students about studying in England so um but brown lawyer and I will be sitting down to compare and contrast the UK versus l the US law school system we'll discuss how she's studying during the pandemic and the advice and tips that she can give to a law student and much more obvious uh you guys are welcome to join us in this conversation by asking questions if you ever thought of studying a different country or even living in a different country this is your time to ask those questions and um i'm really looking forward to this conversation so now, right now we'll just wait to see um for her to go online i know that i started just a, a, a minute before nine so we'll give her some time to log on and and um start joining us on this live ig hi everyone it's just so great i love that we can connect this way <laughs> hi paulita <laughs> Yay, Brown Eye Lawyer just joined us. We'll be connecting here soon. Hi. Hi. Sorry about that. I was trying to figure out how to join. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. <laughs> so nice to meet you. You're really nice to meet you. I feel like we've spoken, but I've never like spoke to you in in yeah. person. So yeah, I've always seen you. Your you know your photos and we our messages back and forth on Instagram. I can't believe I'm actually talking to you. And you are uh, what eight hours ahead of us here on the east coast of the U.S. And you're you're at five o'clock right now. We're at nine a.m. So. Exactly. So I just had dinner, basically. <laughs> and you guys are starting your day. <laughs> yeah, we just already we just had dinner. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, how about you tell us a little bit about so uh, yourself so our audience know who you are and what you're, what you're doing in England and why we're talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, my name is Anna Rivera and I am currently living in the UK, so in England. And I've been here, this is my third year now. Um, and I was born and raised in Honduras. So my this is my second language, of course, but Spanish is my <laughs> first language. And, and then I moved to um, the US uh, when I was 18. So I did like a bachelor degree in elementary and special education. And then when the time came and I decided to go to law school, um, I chose to come to England. So that was three years ago. And now, so, uh, yeah, and I started um, my blog. This is the way, like, I found you. Um, just to share a bit more about my experience and about my journey in general um, and how I'm getting through law school. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who would, I think it's incredible that how, where life will take us. You know, you were born in Honduras and now you came to the U.S in the U.S., correct, for some time, yeah, so for, for a while here studying, and then now you're in England, so I think that's pretty, uh, pretty interesting how our world just seems so small at the same time. <laughs> exactly, it's crazy, I'm just like, 
<laughs> you're you're con uh, the fact that we're speaking to each other and we're living in different continents <laughs> summarizes it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So I guess I'll start with asking some questions. Will our audience ask any questions that you may have? that they may have throughout this and we'll post this on our YouTube if you're able to stay with us uh, uh, that'd be great so that you can ask uh, talking to the audience here but they can ask questions um, and then on YouTube uh, we'll post it later um, uh, for you to for those who are going to be missing this out so um, how uh, tell us like how did you even end up in England how did that occur why law school in England and how did you start here in the U.S. and end up over there? So um, the original plan was I would do four years in the States, you know, my normal bachelor degree. And I did elementary and special education. And then I was going to work for a few years as a teacher, save money, and I'll be able to, be able to afford uh, law school. And then study. Um, that was the plan. And then... Six. So when my second year of uh, school in America, I met my boyfriend, who's British, um, and we've been together ever since that moment. And he was like, he knew that I wanted to do, I wanted to be a lawyer, um, and he was like, Have you looked into schools in the UK? And I was like, No, that has never occurred to me. Like my plan is um, to do the um, LSAT after finishing uni, and then. Um, doing the four years of school uh, so I started researching a bit more um, what law school was like in the UK and if I was even eligible um, to study here and to become a lawyer here so once I started doing the research I have um, found out that I could do my degree here in two years for half the price that I would do it in the States Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't have to do the LSAT. So the difference is here, you could go from, so at 18, you can choose to go to law school straight away. So oh. compared to the, the states where you have to do a four-year degree first and then uh, take the LSAT, then do four more years, um, some people doing three uh, to go to law school and then take the bar. Here you can do three years straight away. And then obviously you have some practical courses after that. But um, for me, it seemed like, why would I do four years when I could do it for two years? I could do it in mm -hmm. two years. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so the thing is that um, until you start researching things, you, you don't know. Like, it's not like I could ha I did, could ask anyone about it. I was like, mm -hmm. no, one is, no one that I know has done this before. Everyone's just like the normal route to, to be a lawyer. Um, so yeah, so I came to university here um, that accepted my four-year degree in America. And then uh, I did two years, uh, got my uh, law degree. And then now I'm doing the uh, legal practice course, which is basically kind of like the bar for um, in the States. Oh, okay. And so I guess that's the, the question. So you didn't have to take the LSAT. You... Did you apply just directly to the school that you wanted to go to? And how did you know what school to pick? I guess that's the next. Yeah. So I started looking for um, schools that would have the program. So because obviously I didn't want to do three years. Like every university here has the three year normal program. So I wanted to do one that was shorter that would accept that I already had a previous degree. Um, and there were two universities that offer the, their, it's called LLB senior status. So it's basically a two year um, law degree instead of three. Um, and that's how I found York because they offered it. Um, and also the way they taught specifically. So, cause I've been in uni before I was used to the lecture base uh, method, you know, like uh, you go to the classroom, the teacher just gives you uh, run through all the books and you learn and you go to exams and for me York was very different because it gave you more of a hands-on approach and um, so uh, you learn in through firms so it's a very different style of teaching so we get like cases every week and we kind of learn it the other so we get like the problem and then we have to figure out the law mm -hmm. um, based on the problem so it was a very different way of learning it so that's why I picked uh, that university. And when you mean that you get cases, are you talking about like just written cases or actual cases? 
Um, so they would give you like a scenario. Oh, so nice. so they say, um, this person is from the EU. Um, he has never been arrested. Uh, he's not a citizen from the UK, but he has a three-year-old daughter and they want to, um, they're trying to stay here. So they have this sort of problem and we have to figure out how to help them using the law. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, here in the US, we will, well, at least in the school I went to, we will read a lot of cases, um, but we will read the, you know, the judge's opinion and what the, what was the outcome of the case already, um, past cases. Um, and during the exams, that's when we will get real lifestyle, you know, practicing. Yeah. So it will be up to us to practice our exams before we <laughs> had, um, you know, and, and did anything like finding a result for that case. So it will be up to us to do that most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we wouldn't actually practice, case, you know, like just solving something right away. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, they throw you into the deep end, which I think it's great because obviously a client is not going to come and be like, this is the case and this is the case. This is my problem. They just come with a bunch of facts and they're like, please help me. And you're like, okay, I'll try my best trying to figure out what you need. And I went to an evening program. So I had the opportunity to work for different law firms and different government agencies and nonprofits during that time. And those cases, I mean, the cases came like that. I mean, those were real people. So I would handle those cases. So I learned how to do that very early on. I mean, I had a... a, a I, I work I always talk about him but I have my mentor Jason Flora he he owns Flora law firm in in Indianapolis Indiana and he would always challenge me to know immigration law because that's what I was doing at that time um to know the law to know how to apply it you know what issue came up for him for me to analyze the problem and to give him a result so that was so important for him to to teach me in that way so I could think like a lawyer, you know, the same way that you're doing it. But that was, it had to be practice-based and law school doesn't really prepare you. Um, and I, I would say that they'll prepare you with the law, but they will not prepare you for actually doing everyday life things. And that a lot of things can throw you off. A lot of facts can throw you off. So that's really cool that you guys get to do that pretty early on. <laughs> I, yeah, I thought that was a great way just because no one teaches you how to think like a lawyer. Yes, you, you need to learn the law. and you, But at the end of the day, you also have to learn how to deal with the client. Uh, even, you know, when someone comes, like how to deal with their emotions, how to um, just be compassionate or be like, it's going to be all right. Like no one teaches you that. It's not, it's not like, like law school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think I have a question here. It kind of goes along with our next point here. So I know that after after two years, you'll basically be done with the school part and you'll go into the practice part. How long is that practice? Um, For um, a year. So year? Okay. it's a year of studying and uh, exams, um, basically, because um, I'm doing the solicitor route. So that's also the difference. In England, you either become a solicitor or a barrister. Oh. And... Uh, I picked a solicitor, so I'm doing uh, a year of the legal practice. Course. And can you tell us the difference between those two? For those that we yes. know. <laughs> yeah, so in America, you're an attorney, right? So you yeah. can do both uh, drafting and, and negotiating and giving legal advice, but you can also advocate in court. Here, there's the distinction that if you're a barrister, that's when you plead your case um, in court. And if you're a solicitor, you're more into the uh, drafting uh, documents and leading negotiations. So you don't represent your clients at court. You have a barrister to do that for you. Oh, wow. um, so it's, it, it, is, it is quite different. It is, yeah. I mean, kind of had an idea, but it's pretty, pretty new to me to like listen that you, and can you do both? I guess that's not the question that's in the back of my mind when you do that. Um, so you could, you could always take, uh, so after you do the LPC, you could always take the year long BPC bar, the bar practice course. Um, but I think people tend to usually stay one or the other. Oh, I, I don't think that we study anymore. 
<laughs> That's interesting. Um, I have a question here that follows up. And do you plan to practice law there in England? Or do you plan to practice in the U.S.? Or are you ever considering coming back to the U.S.? Yeah. So, yeah, I would say never say never, right? You you don't know um, what life's going to take you. But so far, I, do, I have a job um, here in the U.K. for when I'm done uh, with my LPC. But I can practice in the in I can practice in New York if I want because New York is um, very similar to common law. So I would obviously have to take the bar exam um, in New York. But if I pass uh, the bar exam, then I'm able to uh, be a lawyer in in the U.S. But so far, I think for now, um, I, I'm very happy here in the U.K. So. But I also love the, the fact that I have the possibility of going. And I've no people that actually study um, the bar um, prep for the New York exam and went to the U.S. just to take the exam and got through it. So mm -hmm. it's, I'm glad someone else has done it and I can ask them how, how they managed to do that. Yeah. yeah, I had a lot of acquaintances in law school who were from different country um, and they would mm -hmm the attorneys in their country many times they had been there for a long time I even had two Brazilian judges in my law school class mm -hmm. and they will come and study for the LLM um, class of the master's in law um, mm -hmm. and then they sorry the exam excuse me the the, the year program the two, I think it's two years um, and then they would go and take the New York bar exam so they could be licensed in the US yeah. so uh, I know that's another way for them to be able to practice in the U.S. and um, they will take that exam in New York. So yeah, um, that's if you are going to a civil country, so like Brazil. Um, but if you come from, so if you did an LLB in England, the Australia, or Hong Kong, then you're able to just take the the bar exam. The bar. But if not, like you said, they would do the masters. But I don't think I want to study anymore. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I did not know that. I have not met someone from England. I have met, you know, others from, like, Ukraine or something like that who had to take the LLM or take the classes in the LLM and then go and take the New York bar exam. That's really cool. I'm learning a lot from you, too, <laughs> so, which is why I've, learned, I've really enjoyed the cafecito times, getting to just hear and learn. And some things you know, I already know the, the answer to, but some, you know, I can't really... I would like to somebody else to be able to explain those things to us, their field. And it's just been so great for me to, to do that. So, yeah, <laughs> I love the name though. Like the moment I heard it, like cafecito, I'm just like, yes, uh, I need I mean, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually I, I, I would, you know, I'm a tea drinking person, which, you know, might get some hate for that, but I, I I really um I do enjoy coffee, but most of the time I'm the person that puts a lot of milk in my coffee. You know, so that's just me. Usually it's like leche con café. It's not café. Leche. <laughs> I love that. Definitely. Uh. <laughs> that's like that's funny. So I have a couple more questions. Um, I did get a comment here uh, from Paulita. Thanks for sharing your story. It never came to mind to study law in another country. Like you said, you never know until you research or people or, or hear people's stories. Me de, me de, me de mucho gusto. Me da mucho gusto. Okay, awesome. <laughs> well, I'm glad it, that you guys are uh, changing perspectives, especially our followers. I know that I never thought about it until I was in law school about going to different country and, and living and studying or taking the exams there being an attorney um, until I met my husband my husband's actually Russian uh, which <laughs> so different cultures that you, you you imagine you're very different but we're also very similar um, in our family values so that matched up for us and uh, not that I would go and you know to Russia, but what I mean is I would go to somebody somewhere else. And I love international law, so I yeah. thought it'd be so great to you know work for the UN one day or something like that. That's like a dream, but um, oh my god, that would be the dream. <laughs> that is like that was always one of my dreams when I went to law school. Like, like when you think of a change in the world, that's like the one thing that you might think about. <laughs> and <laughs> well, <laughs> We'll jump into another question. So 
Um, I know that you mentioned applying and like researching. So what were some requirements for you to get into your law school and how does that work? So because I had a previous degree, I think my requirements might be different if someone came straight from high school because you're able to do that um, and do the three-year degree. But for me, I needed to do the TOEFL. Um, so the English requirement, because obviously my first language is not English, so I need to prove mm -hmm. that I was able to, um, to speak English. And then uh, I also had to prove that I had my four-year degree, so my diploma, uh, my grades. Uh, so the equivalent was maybe like a 3.0 for my GPA um, to be able to uh, get in. And then a personal statement. So pretty much uh, why I wanted to study law and a bit more of uh, about me. And then I had to do an interview. So while I was in the States, uh, we did a Skype interview and they asked me like a couple of questions. Um, why law? Why the UK? And a very interesting one was like, if uh, I could pick a celebrity to become a judge, who would I pick? And that was, that was a very, very interesting question. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I wish someone would have asked me those type of questions. <laughs> so, I love that you didn't have to take the LSAT. I think a lot of our, our a lot of our followers they have a lot of LSAT questions. That was one of our more intense conversations on our cafecito time this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I I think I have another question here for you. It just came in. What kind of law would you like to practice once you? Um, um finish a one-year practice um so i would like to qualify into either uh intellectual property so it's kind of like trademark um or employment law either one um i think i really like so far i like both of them but um we'll see once i start actually um going into my seats and see if i actually do like the day-to-day -day work yeah i think those are those are really great great fields i definitely i also enjoy like learning from taylor who we had yesterday who's a trademark attorney here in the states and then i took some employment labor law those types of classes and they're so interesting so definitely a recommendation especially so that you are aware of what your employer is thinking you know when it comes to <laughs> Yes, definitely. It's good. I, I think I really like the people aspect of it. I think um, I think it's a good medium between, um, you know, like more the family and the criminal. I don't think I could do either of those just because I, I would probably be too emotion emotionally attached. I kind mm -hmm. of uh, quite enjoy the, the, it's the perfect mission for me from business and people like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's for yeah. our strengths. <laughs> that is a really good point. I think those are some things that people should consider with what they want to practice when they graduate um, or are about to graduate or even go into law school. It's like, okay, can you detach yourself from the emotional um, and just go in it? And also, I would like to say that you learn it because I, I'm a very emotional <laughs> person, but I did immigration law and some criminal law. Um, and family law and it kind of just mixes in sometimes depending on the type of practice because immigration law is somehow always mixed in those two and I had to learn to to very quickly you know put those aside and be there for the client and whatnot but at the same time it can be emotionally draining especially when you're working full-time going to school um, part-time um, it can drain you and over time I know that a lot of attorneys can get worn out so it's always important to know where are you going to be um, happy and what's going to be fulfilling for you so that's a very good point and deciding what you're going to be doing for a long time <laughs> so, that's yeah. the thing you have to think about it's not five years hopefully you'll have a really long lasting career and you want it to be fulfilling all the way through but you know you can always do something else right but yeah that's true if you don't want to practice law there's something else that you could do especially after you have your education so <laughs> yeah okay. um and then i guess i have a couple more questions here um and how, I mean, I know that you're studying right now. I know you said that you're on your break right now, with your spring break, correct? Um, yeah. So how, I know that, how how are things in, with the pandemic? Are you 
taking classes online right now or is everything virtual and how are you studying and I know it can be stressful. Can you fill us in on what's the situation there right now? Yeah, so um, so this is our fourth week of lockdown in the UK. Um, so we're allowed to go out, uh, you know, for the basics, if we want to go grocery shopping or for any medical supplies. And then, like, we, ha we can do one form of exercise. So whether that is running or biking or walking, we could do that just once a day. Um, so but it's it's been a it's been a interesting change just because i've never done online classes and um, my school has been really good like i think it took like maybe one week and they had all the online classes up and running um which was really helpful because it wasn't really a big interruption but um i prefer face-to-face -face teaching like i think the motivation is just so different like i have to just push myself and be like you have to do this like it's not summer even though it's nice and sunny in england but it's not summer vacation um so i think every day for me is different like i try to stick to a routine if i can so in the morning i try to wake up at eight or seven o'clock and try to i prefer to do Uh, to go for a walk or a bike or something in the morning so try to do exercise in the morning and then come back shower have breakfast and then do some kind do at least one thing that i have for classes because they start next week um so I, at least one something to prepare for them and then i think even if i don't get as much done i think for me right now it's more of taking care of my mental health And because I know everyone's like, oh, like, this is a great time. Like, if you've ever said, oh, I, I, I wish I had more time for this. Like, this is the time. But at the same time, it's not a normal time. Like, there's a lot going on. And some parents, some people have um, key workers, so people in the front line. And my parents are at home. So I think it, you have to understand that it, it, it's all about balance. So... Mm -hmm. At this point, I am trying to keep, like, at least trying to do one or two things uh, about uni because I know how important that is. But at the same time, I'm also taking some time for it myself. And um, really, whether that is, like, listening to podcasts, spending an hour on TikTok, which I shouldn't, but it's just so, <laughs> so fun. Um, and doing stuff like this, I think it's really important to talk to people. You know, just don't feel isolated. Like, you know, it's uh, physical distance, but no, um, we can still talk to others and ask them how they're doing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Working a day at time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably a good good point. It's that I know that I see posts about, you know, pushing through this and overcoming um, any negative feelings and doing being very productive. But I know that for some of us, it can be very daunting. Like you're you're having too much stress, a possibly anxiety. And if it's not everyday anxiety and you might have some chronic anxiety, um, and that can be overwhelming because everybody's telling you to be productive. So I can totally agree with that. I know that um, I've, I'm trying to be as productive as I can, but there are times I also feel overwhelmed. So trying to balance that with going out for a walk is very important for me and so especially now i'm working from home so um now i'm a social person yeah. in these kind of the times that every morning has been like a wake-up call getting ready for it um so definitely balancing oh, that has been really <laughs> helpful so definitely um and i know that I'm managing your studies right now. Um, I, I saw that you recently were studying for exams as well. Um, and you were asking how is it that you studied for the exams? Um, was there different ways to study for the exams? Do you, and my question would be, what type of exams do you get? Is it like really long? Like I would have, I would have gotten three hour to five hour exams here so I don't know how that works over there and how often do you guys have exams so yeah so usually our exams are three hour long face to face like a sitting exam and um, obviously because of this um we they move it online so that was a very um, stressful thing too because we didn't know if we were going to have exams or if we were our course was going to be extended um, but they decided to do them online and they're going to be four hours 
um, for how long. And then it's, uh, so I had different, I have 10 multiple choice questions and then um, the rest of it is like 80% of it is uh, written answers. So I think one of the best techniques I've heard from other study grounds um, is a Pomodoro technique. So doing 20 minutes uh, of study, then taking a five minute break, and then 20 minutes again, I think it just breaks it up because you are like, these are 20 minutes that I need to focus. Um, I need to study. And then you know that you have that five minute break in between where you can just, um, just completely rest. So I think that's a really good technique. I try to use it. Um, just if I know I'm not being able to focus, you know, for a long period of time, like I've seen some people that are nine to five and I'm like, oh, wow, that's great. But I think my tops is like nine to two and then I'm hungry and then I'm going to go <laughs> a cup of tea. And, then, <laughs> like, <laughs> and it actually, I heard, the, I heard the same suggestion. That's what I did at law school too. It was so helpful to really? have a, I didn't realize I had a very short attention span until I was in law school. And I didn't realize that um, I have a, a little bit of dyslexia and like I I would mix around my letters. <laughs> so even in writing until I was in law school. So a lot of things, underlying things that I would excel, you know, in college and then coming to law school, it was very different. But I learned that I also needed to do the 20 minutes and then the five minute rest. And that was, I actually started with uh, 15 minutes until I worked myself up to a higher um, concentration yeah. time. And that was really helpful. Yeah. Um, it definitely works. And it's interesting that we're in completely different continents and that we're actually getting some of the same advice <laughs> to study. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's so helpful it, it is yeah I think especially in law school you have to realize that it's a lot of content a lot of it like it's not easy it's just like oh yeah I could just read it or I could be having something in the background like I used to before so I need to be fully focused on what I'm reading otherwise I'm just like I have no idea what I just read yeah <laughs> it's also true especially with something so dense that you do have to have, you know, the energy taking care of yourself so that you can concentrate. Because I would have my moments of, I'm so tired. I don't want to do this, but I have to. I mean, I'm paying, we're paying for it, right? <laughs> so, or um, we're, we're, we're wanting to reach our long-term goal. And, and it's, it, I, people always say, you know, law school is a really long marathon. So you have to pace yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> take one day at a time and, and that's the thing like I just think this is gonna be over we're gonna get through it and just make the most of right now the time like try to do as much as I can so then I don't regret it when we're out of it and be like oh I wish I could have done so much more work yeah. <laughs> um, and I have a couple more questions I know that we're about to hit our half hour um, time mm -hmm. here and, um before you go on, uh, go. Um, do you have any other advice that you'd like to leave us with, or any tips for any pre-law students, or law students who are considering either studying in the U.S. or um, studying a different country, um, in you know, in making that decision and researching? Like, what do you think? Um, what are some last-minute tips that you would like to leave us with? I think for anyone started, thinking of studying in another country, I think do it. That's the best thing you can ever do. Not just because you're going to study the law, but just because you're going to learn a different culture. Um, mm -hmm. And it's amazing going, learning, becoming more independent. Um, I think you become a, more of a well-rounded person because of it. So anyone that would like to do it, I deeply encourage it. Yeah, You won't regret it. And um, hopefully you're not stuck in a pandemic and then have to come back home or you do that. But um, I'm hoping that um, we will get out of this situation and international students can um, go and study and study abroad after this. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah, I think research the university, um, talk to students. I think nowadays there's so many ways you can learn about the university, learn about the course, um, just by asking students that have done it before, uh, use LinkedIn. I feel like there's so many people that have where they went to university. Um, and there's so many people you can actually ask, ask for advice. Um, and that's the point of this Instagram is uh, I didn't have anyone to ask advice for. Um, 
or at the moment sometimes even just get support you know like when you're having a really bad day and you're just like i really cannot do this it's great to have um a support of community um mm -hmm. and that's the study room for me because um I see other students and they're dealing with some the same issues. Maybe we're not even in the same course or we're not even studying the same thing, but I think we all have times when we're like, I'm not good enough for this. I'm struggling. What do I do? Um, how can I get help? And I think this is a great way to, to share and to realize you're not alone. You're not the only one feeling stressed about you of school or figuring out what in your life. Um, yeah. So yeah, reach out. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to help. But um, clearly, you and me, for example, we want to share our, our what we've learned so far. I mean, it's learning, but <laughs> I can help someone. Well, thank you so much. You have been such an awesome interviewee. <laughs> we really have. I really have enjoyed learning from you and uh, meeting you finally. So <laughs> I hope that we'll have <laughs> meet you. Back our IG live um, we'll post this one on YouTube for all of our viewers and hopefully we'll have brown eyed lawyer if you um, can find her handle go ahead and follow her she offers great tips and um, <laughs> we'll actually I'll let you go here a little bit and then I'll I um, will go ahead and jump on editing and this video so <laughs> we'll do that and, it's so nice speaking to you <laughs> <laughs> well, if anyone else that has uh, any questions for me, I can pass those on uh, to her, to Brown Not Lawyer for her. Um, and I will jo join me tomorrow at 9 a.m. for another cafecito time. We'll be talking to a Latina registered nurse about the pandemic um, with everything going on and um, any insight that we can get as a Latino community in the U.S., and um, how to get some, uh, what to do when you know somebody is sick in our community and they might be afraid of going to the hospital and whatnot. So join us um, tomorrow at 9 a.m. for our last cafecito of the week and they'll be announcing our next uh, guest for next week, which I'm excited that we'll be doing this for another two more, two more weeks. So thank you, Anna. Have a great day and um, good luck with all of your exams. You. And in your last year of so being much. a law student. So. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be looking forward to your cafecito. See what Thank else you. I can learn. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>